Well, man is no stranger to conflict. And I'm sure you'll agree that everywhere you look, you can see conflict maybe that is close to you and maybe it's far away. Um, Maybe it's something you deal with on a regular basis. Maybe it's in the news. It's certainly in Congress. It's it's something man is very familiar with. And as Christians, we find conflict also when, when we're doing the right thing. We can still find conflict. You, you just really can't avoid it. And in, um, in Philippians uh, chapter 1, starting at verse 12, I'll pick up there where uh, Paul is in chains for Christ. He's, he's in prison. And I'd like you to listen for his reaction to this persecution. And, and then later, really, what the answer to the, the conflict um, that he's in might be, and also conflict we might find with each other. There are some, some key points in this that, that I'd like you to listen for. Starting in verse 12. Now I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that what has happened to me has actually served to advance the gospel. As a result, it has become clear throughout the whole palace guard and to everyone else that I am in chains for Christ. And because of my chains, most of my brothers and sisters have become confident in the Lord and dare all the more to proclaim the gospel without fear. It is true that some preach Christ out of envy and rivalry, but others out of goodwill. The latter do so out of love, knowing that I am put here for the defense of the gospel. The former preach Christ out of selfish ambition, not sincerely opposing or supposing that they can stir up trouble for me while I am in chains. But what does it matter? The important thing is, In every way, whether false motives or true, Christ is preached. And because of this, I rejoice. Yes, I will continue to rejoice. For I know that through your prayers and God's provision of the Spirit of Christ, that has happened, what has happened to me will turn out for my deliverance. I eagerly expect and hope that I will in no way be ashamed, but will have sufficient courage so that now, as always, Christ will be exalted in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. If I know, if I am to go on living in the body, this will be, this will mean fruitful labor for me. Yet what shall I choose? I do not know. I am torn between the two. I desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is, is better by far. But it is more necessary for you that I remain in the body, convinced of this. I know that I will remain, and I will continue with all of you for your progress and joy in the faith, so that through, through my being with you again, your boasting in Christ Jesus will abound on account of me. His his spirit, if you, if you think about this passage, is of rejoicing because of the result of what, what his suffering is bringing to the gospel. And he says things like hope, and he's talking about um, rejoicing while he's experiencing this persecution. He goes on to talk about... The conduct, the conduct of the Philippians, and he looks forward to meeting them again, starting in verse 27. Whatever, whatever happens, conduct yourself in a matter, matter worthy of the gospel of Christ. Then whether I come and I see you or I only hear about you in my absence, I will know that you stand firm in one spirit, striving together as one for the faith of the gospel without being frightened in any way by those who oppose you. 
Now, did you hear the, the reason or what, what he's getting at there is, is standing firm together. He, he's using words of unity and reconciliation. But he's not talking about the world. He's not talking about conflict resolution with his, his persecution or his situation where he has been put in chains for preaching the gospel. He's talking about conflict, conflict resolution within the body. And he's talking about being one within the body. He goes on to say, this is a sign to them that they will be destroyed but that you will be saved, and that by God. For it has been granted to you on behalf of Christ, listen to this, not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for him. Since you are going through the same struggle you saw I had, and now hear that I still have. That's a a remarkable thing that I, I don't think we have an easy time with. Um, We have been granted the ability to believe in Christ, but we've also been uh, granted suffering for him. Um, And Paul seems to embrace this. This last passage that starts in chapter 2, he is seeking comfort in a way from the Philippians and, and he instructs them on how to comfort him in his time of need um, because this, this persecution is real. He's in prison. But he doesn't lose sight of what's really important, the unity that God desires his church to have. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ... If any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. This message, to me, changes that conflict that I see in the world because I know that we have unity here and we have likeness of mind and likeness of spirit. And, and I, I hope that you can draw strength from that and encouragement just, just as Paul was encouraging the Philippians to do for him. In, in his time of need. If you have conflict that you'd like to discuss with the church body or someone here, or, or if you have conflict between yourself and a brother or sister, or if you, you just need prayers for any reason, or, or if you'd like to know more about Jesus and being reconciled with God, please come forward as we stand and sing.